Hey everyone, it's Dogfire. Welcome to Dogfire's Down and Dirty Reviews. If you're looking for unbiased reviews on autococker parts and markers, you've come to the right place. Because I have to buy this stuff out of my own pocket. Anyway, enjoy the show. And you have a good time here? Do me a favor. Hit that like and subscribe button. Have a good one. All right, guys. We're here to do a review on the, the new, or sort of new, Shock Tech SFL Desert Fox body or marker sure we're gonna look at it and um i just got this. this is my personal i bought it actually all the reviews i do are my personal stuff stuff i have to pay for and um i'm really uh i'm really liking this so far uh out of the box is pretty nice and we'll go into details on some other finite issues things i like and don't like about it but just take a look at the do some close-up shots of it you guys can see the quality of the anodizing that's nice anodizing. It's not blotchy. It's just a matte. It's their matte black. I think it, you can get this in like that uh, blue. I think they had red, green. I think they had. Uh, then they had the, the standard kind of that uh, desert camo look, whatever it was, that desert uh, tan. I got the black one because I just, I don't know. Black just kind of never goes out of style, right? Kind of get some details of their grips there. But uh, just kind of do a quick kind of video tour of the body. Hopefully stuff isn't too dark here for you. I've kind of got a new setup I'm working on uh, for my videos. You guys see the intro is a little bit different. I'm still working on that. But uh, all in all, um, this is a, a pretty pretty nicely machined. Anno's nice. Uh, it's pretty well put together. Now, I haven't taken this gun apart. This is how it came out of the box. <clears throat> And, uh, so it's, uh, it's all factory. Uh, a lot of times I'll take stuff apart, stuff like that, but we're going to work on a, we're going to start from the front and go to the back and we'll start with the barrel kit. So I got the one that came with the, um, the field one, uh, the new, uh, insert kit, which, uh, this review is not really about that. It's about, uh, really the gun, but, uh, I've seen a lot of reviews out there for the field one stuff. It's nice. Um, it's, uh, it's pretty interesting setup. I thought it, Initially, I kind of thought it was kind of gimmicky, uh, but I kind of like it. You know, there's a lot of good barrel kits out there. This is definitely a good barrel kit. There's no doubt in my mind that uh, that insert locks with the front tip, so you have a nice good alignment and uh, makes it uh, just a little different setup. Uh, seems to shoot really nice. That's a nice sound signature, but there's a lot of videos out there. You guys can go search that stuff. Now, I do know uh, that uh, I think the other barrel kit options are, I think it's a, a die two piece barrel, stuff like that. But we're really not here um, to kind of talk about the gun. So let's start kind of going through this gun from the front to the back and I'll start with the front pneumatics here. And so we look here, it's the shock tech pneumatics. We got the uh, shock tech LPR and there've been a, you know, a few changes since the original internally. I don't know what the changes are, if there is any at all. Um, but I've noticed that like everything is stainless steel. It's got a little chamfered edge in the back here, um, on the machining. Um, and then they obviously got the shock tech sticker and the adjustment uh, wheel. And it's got a nylon set screw to make sure those adjustments don't come loose on you, which is really nice. Um, seems to have functioned fine. Um, and then that goes, that feeds into your, uh, the new version of the, uh, shock tech three way. And uh, there were some initial reports on some of these three ways. And I don't know if they fixed the problem yet or not, but uh, uh, it was uh, it was a little thin um, in the uh, in some of the machining. So if you were to drop the gun, it could snap off. And here, let me show you on this uh, older version of a Shock Tech three way um, that I have here. So if you look at here, I don't know if I can focus it in here or not. There you go. See how thick it is uh, around the thread area, the thickness of the machining. Uh, it's thinner on the other ones. And I don't have another Shock Tech, the new version Shock Tech 3 way to show you the difference. But uh, I had a friend that was working on a gun and uh, he, he dropped it and it snapped off. The, the three way snapped off right at the threads. Didn't hurt the, the front block or anything, but. Uh, it was an issue, um, and I'm concerned like this being a tournament style gun or a tournament grade gun, 
that uh, if that would be an issue. I don't know if it is. I'm not having any issues now, so I'm assuming that the problem has been uh, dealt with. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, let's kind of look at here the RAM. This, the RAM is uh, the ShockTech RAM. It's nice. It's not all Loctited together, which is super nice, guys. Uh, look, at I can unscrew it right here. And I can access service the O-rings in there. And it's got, you know, all the standard O-rings. Enough hose on there that you could pull it off. It's got the uh, Allen head on the on the interior. So you can unscrew it from your pump arm. Um, so you're not sitting there uh, barring up your pump arm and uh, damaging that shaft in any way. So it's, you know, it's got a lot of those nice features that the uh, higher end guns out there that are, are uh, in the Cocker world are, are putting on the market. Uh, just to make it maintenance and, and usability a lot easier. Uh, one of the other things uh, that I noticed uh, is this uh, LPC, the low pressure chamber in front. And I noticed it's, uh, if you notice, I went to unscrew it. I wanted to see um, if my front block was a pin front block or not. But uh, when I unscrewed it, it took a really small Allen wrench and it came right off. And, and uh, I was looking at this chamber. And I go, wow, that looks very similar. Well, what they did in their infinite wisdom, which I think is great, smart, smart machining or smart manufacturing, is is the LPC chamber is a RAM chamber. So, um, for whatever reason, if you were to damage your RAM chamber or your RAM outer shell, uh, you would be able to swap it out with LPC and just plug that LPC or something like that. I don't know. Uh, and in short term. But uh, pretty interesting, kind of makes it uh, neat for uh, uh, anodizing or whatever, I don't know. But uh, I like that. It's just uh, it's kind of smart manufacturer. It saves money on their, their part, so their profit margin's up. And if their profit margin's up, they're going to want to make more stuff for us. You know, that's a fact of the matter. But uh, anyway, it's, uh, uh, the RAM is nice and smooth, so it's a good RAM. Um, now, the front block, uh, when I did... Uh, undo the uh, the banjo bolt there just a little bit to, to make sure that uh, if it was the new pin version and this is the pin version you know on these minis uh, a lot of times if uh, uh, you get that kind of wiggle if you grab grab that uh, regulator you can wiggle the whole front block this is pinned in um, a couple other manufacturers are doing pinned in versions back in the day and I think it was Wicked Air Sports and and they're one of their markers they were making they were pinning the front blocks, but uh, anyway, it's nice. Uh, the regulator is the CP Gen 3 regulator that they have make make for them. And never been a big CP fan. Um, and, uh, you know, so my, I always hesitate on that. I just, I've never had luck with them. So people really love them. I just never had luck with them. But uh, this one's set at 200 PSI, about 220. And uh, seems to work pretty good. And, uh, but it's new and he's broken. But that's it. It's got the ShockTech uh, three-way uh, actuator rod here, and it's uh, nice. It's got tapered in. It's all stainless, stainless steel screws. I haven't found any steel screws or anything other than stainless steel. So you can see the the play there. That's uh, for your little uh, mechanical uh, timing. There, you got your stainless steel uh, pump arm, and uh, seems to be just a, you know your standard quality. Uh, has the uh, double wire uh, detents on it, which kind of nice helps line the ball up. Um, and then your uh, shock deck locking uh, clamping feed neck, and it's a I don't know if it's a low rise, it's a I would call it a between a low and a mid rise, but you can spin the collar around if you want to change positions or whatever. But it's a got the nice adjusting cap on the side, and I don't know what threads they use, I think they may use like an angel thread on there. I, I don't know. A uh, shock deck guy's a uh, let me know what that is. Uh, got the Gunfighter 1.5 frame on it. Uh, remember, I did a review on the uh, on the 1.0 frame, and I really I really like the frame. I'm a big slider guy. I can I can shoot a slider, I think, a little bit better than I can a hinge, just because of what I'm used to and uh, stuff like. But let me uh, let me grab the uh, the 1.5. Here it is, right here. And so here's the one I did the review on, on the 1.5. And it's got the Delrin trigger plate from Killshot Customs. I know he's making those again, guys. Uh, I think he's maybe already sold out again. Or I think he made a whole bunch. But anyway, uh, I think it's a little bit, they've done some improvements on it. I don't know exactly what they've done. Uh, Shock Tech, you can, you can uh, 
you know, chime in there at the bottom if you're watching this or not. Uh, but it's nice. It's good snappy. It's a heavy trigger pull because it's got a metal trigger. It's got the glide screws at the bottom. And if I recall, I don't know if they're brass tip, but I think they're polished tip. But it's nice and smooth. It feels really good. It's it's a high-end trigger. It's what I would expect from a gun um, that is a tournament grade. It's a high-end gun. Um, and it just feels good. The trigger shoe is a little bit different than the, the Gen 1 gun, um, but it's a very comfortable trigger shoe. I, I really like their trigger shoes. And uh, here's the stainless steel uh, screws on it. Um, and then the shock tech... Their grips are 3D printed grips, uh, although they, they they look you know cool. You know, it's 3D printed, but you know I I don't know. It's uh it's getting their name out there, I guess. Um, that's kind of always been their mantra. Is they they plaster shock tech on everything. You know, so their stickers and some of their older guns were machine shocked it down the side. But they're they're hard they're hard plastic grip. There's no rubber in them. Uh, they provide good grip, so um, there's no doubt that if your hands get you get paint on your hands and stuff like that. It's not going to slip, but, uh, you know, whatever. But it's, um, the uh, rear screw is an inset screw, which is nice. So you don't to rub your hand on it. So your, your web of your thumb on it. It's nice. And uh, glad to see that you're doing that. All right. So the, uh, the bottom line on this is their shock tech bottom line. It's a uh, brass threaded. So it, uh, the front knob spins really smoothly. It's uh, dovetailed. Uh, you can kind of see that in here on their little rail, I guess. Uh, it sits uh, uh, it sits flush to the back of the uh, the grip frame, and um, it has two ports left and right on it. Uh, one of the port plugs is a little long. I wish they would have shortened that up, and I wish they would put a port on the bottom of it. Uh, I don't know. I, it'd be nice, but uh, it's not not necessary. I like the ones that come out the front. Uh, the, the macro line comes right into the front of the, uh, the ASA, but, uh, it works. It's a very, works, doesn't leak anything like that. Um, I wish they'd T-slot these so you can use some of the other Planet Eclipse and Inception design stuff, but it's a standard ASA. It works well. Back of the frames, you got these two uh, rib marks. It helps for a little, uh, traction on your palm there. And all in all, it's a Gunfighter 1.5. It's nice. It's a nice, uh, a heavy pull like i said earlier um, but it's nice and snappy you can really rip uh um i'm, I'm more of a, a slider guy anyway i think uh i just do better with sliders but it's it's a it's a nice uh definitely a nice trigger fill on it no doubt on that it's uh you're gonna be happy when you get the, get this it just doesn't feel like you have to upgrade anything you know you get the thing and it's like everything works on it that's one of the nice things uh, you kind of go start working our way back. Uh, beaver tail, it's got a little set screw so it doesn't go shift side to side. That's just nice. Those are all nice touches on it. Um, it's a standard shock tech uh, uh, beaver screw or beaver tail. And it's got a stainless steel IBG. And then, oh, on this, on the back block, uh, this one is not the version that has the set screw that holds the pump arm in place. That's the, 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 I think the milling they were doing right after I bought mine. They did the front, they pinned the front front block, and then they did this so you 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 know your pump arm wouldn't twist. You can accomplish the same thing with some some Loctite or some Vibatite stuff like that, but uh, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, the uh, the cocking rod is all stainless steel. It's got a nice thick bumper on it. Uh, it's got some good weight to it, so that's going to help in the, the, the weight of the uh, the fat hammer that they have in there. So it's, it's going to add to that weight. So they're running a, you know, a lot of mass in that lower tube. Um, and I'm assuming it has the fat hammer in the lower tube. It's, I think it's got the Shock Tech Rat 3 valve in it, uh, their springs, and, uh, and their, uh, uh, their uh, hammer, that brass hammer that has the stainless steel front. The bolt, um, it's a nice uh, Delrin um, two-piece bolt or three pieces essentially. So the very center section is aluminum with uh, Delrin in the back and Delrin in the front. I like the fact that, uh, you know, it's got the, um, uh, it's got an angled um, inlet port on it. And uh, and then the, uh, it's got a, you know, it's the, Tri flow, whatever you want to call it, it's the three ports, and they're not, they're not holes, they're they kind of try to egg everything out, which 
kind of helps with the, what I call a little what's called stream straightening and fluid dynamics. It uh, kind of helps uh, take any turbulence and before it hits the ball and straighten it a little bit. Uh, slips in really nice. It's a slip fit. There's no O-rings. Um, I, I don't recall if it has the hole. I'd have to look again that where you can adjust the uh, uh, the hammer. I don't think it does on that. It's got There are a couple holes there, but those are the pins to, to hold the front and back section together. Uh, the uh, quick release knob on it's uh, nice stainless steel, but all in all, it's pretty nice. Um, one of the things, you know, I'm not tearing into this to get uh, to show you all the internals and stuff like that, but uh, kind of one of my big things a long time ago was, um, so I get some close ups here for you, was that uh, I wasn't a big Shock Tech uh, fan. And a lot of reasons because I buy just the valve or I buy just the hammer or just a spring kit because everything was sold separately back in the day. And you could buy the kits, but they were, they were, I didn't have enough money for that. And I just could never get stuff to work right. And uh, I'm a firm believer that uh, this gun shoots nice and you'll see some shooting videos here at the end. Um, but it, it works well because it's a kit. Uh, the bolt, the hammer, the springs, and the valve all work in harmony together. And that's one of the things I think is really important. Uh, if you buy like an Inception gun, they're designed to work together. And um, same with like uh, the old war games. You know, I end up, people bring me an old war games gun, it doesn't shoot good. Well, I put all the stock stuff in and give them back to it and it shoots phenomenal. And I, I think it's really getting all those pieces in harmony and, and selling that as a kit. You know, you can get the, uh, what was it, the uh, Evolution kits or uh, the Planet Eclipse where you got the bolt, the hammer, the LPR, uh, the RAM, and all that stuff, and then the, all the lowers and stuff like that. And it made your gun like a Nexus gun. And it shot great after that. Um, AKA did the same with, a, with the lightning bolt and the, and the valve and their springs and hammer kit, their low-pressure setup. If you, if you bought them individually, you'd have a little harder time tuning them. So I think it's, that's one of the kind of important things is this gun is engineered to work with the parts that it has and not saying it won't work with aftermarket parts. Um, it will, but, uh, kind of the question is why, um, you know, these new autocockers are being developed out there. Just, just work, work really well. But, uh, all in all, it's a, you know, the gun feels, uh, feels nice, uh, in, in the hand, um, it's you know there's a you know if i'm going to talk about complaints let's go through the things i don't necessarily like uh the bottom line macaline hose setup i think although it's very functional uh i don't like I, I i wish they would have kind of fixed that but they didn't um the uh, the grips and i get it man it's the cost to 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 produce grips is pretty expensive but here's some detailing on the the milling and stuff like that but uh grips are uh, they they look good they're kind of cheesy um but uh other things that i don't you know like about it hmm, not much uh i i mean my my complaints are nominal uh and you know for a 1700 hundred dollar gun i think that the total cost of this with the barrel kit and everything was right around 1700 dollars and uh, it's the most expensive uh, mechanical marker I've ever purchased. And it's truly, um, in my opinion, you know, is it worth $1,700? Yeah, it, to someone it is. It's, uh, it, it, it's an expensive gun. But it straight up works really well. Now, I have to confess, when I ordered this, they figured out that it was coming to me. And um, because... I called on it and they said, no, Danny's tuning it one more time. And, um, so it came, came to me. I think it ran, um, uh, out of the box. I used Nelson Anarchy. It's probably about four years old, but just keep it in a nice, cool, dry place. And it's my test paint, which is, uh, always shoots really good. And it, uh, it came to me, uh, shooting about three, three twenty something around there. And I pulled that IVG when you, when I, you can see the picture of the IVG was all the way out. Um, and I had to back it down. I, I adjusted with the regulator to, to 
get it down to 285 range for our field limit. And so it shot hot, but it's really guns designed as a tournament gun. So, you know, that's what you that's what you're you're getting. You're getting a tournament level gun. And for $1,700 and the barrel kit and everything you get, you know, it's worth it. It's, it is a nice shooting gun. And, and quite frankly, I didn't think that I would be, you know, I've never been a shock tech fanboy, you know, or whatever you want to call that. I don't want to uh, say anything bad about those guys, but uh, it's a, it's a nice gun. Now it did come with a gun case. And so it's a, uh, uh, a Plano gun case and uh there i can get the little thing up here and it's uh you know it's a nice nice plastic case it's uh it's good quality it's plain you know made in america it's good stuff um and you know you could hold your i can't zoom my camera any further but uh, you could hold all your stuff in it you can hold your barrel kit in it's uh not in the current case or you probably could um but uh here you can see if i get everything in, in frame there it's got uh, or you could throw stuff underneath there you know, um, so they ship it in this, and then the box that this Plano thing comes in, and they use it, so they're saving money on that side. Um, and um, but it's is it uh, an Inception design case? No, it's not. I really like those cases. Uh, I think they look really nice. The gun fits really nice in them. But is it a quality case? Yeah, it's a quality case. It's nothing wrong with it. Um, but uh, you know, for the for the package, not a bad. Uh, not a bad, not a bad deal at all. Uh, there you go. You can look at the gun a little different. Uh, everything kind of lined out there. But uh, yeah, seventy hundred dollars for this gun, um, and I really like it. I love the milling. Uh, one of the reasons I've never bought a Shock Tech gun because I hate the fact that they put uh, Shock Tech milled down the body. Some guys are really into that. I think it looks horrid. I get it. They really kind of marketed a lot of their stuff, their, their, their tournaments and stuff like that. And they're getting their name. That's their branding. That's their style. And uh, I I just don't like it. So anyway, let's get a weight of this thing. I know the camera's kind of skipping through here. And so we're going to do a weight with the barrel. So let's zero out the old post meter. Everything lined up here so you can see. And um, let's look here. So we're... It's about two point uh, two point seven or uh, two pounds uh, twelve point five ounces uh, with the barrel. So uh, without a hopper and a tank, obviously, but it's a two pound gun. Okay, and that's pretty pretty normal. Feels good. It's good weight. So um, it's very sturdy, sturdy marker. But uh, you know, with that, and I I can't complain. I think. Uh, I think everyone should go out and try one of these. Now, I've used Planet Eclipse guns, which I love. The old, but no one, they're not making these anymore. So uh, they are making Shock Tech. They are making Inception Designs. They are making uh, Kill Shot. Uh, Dan from Kill Shot's making guns. Very limited stuff. Uh, you have Free Flow out there uh, that's making stuff. And I can't compare that against. Uh, the free flow, I can't compare it against Inception guns. Inception guns shoot different than this. They they shoot, I mean, quite frankly, all you're, just, all you're, all you're trying to do is get that 68 cali caliber gelatin ball out that barrel accurately and quickly and reliable, right? And the Inception stuff works good. So does this. And uh, is there a personal preference between either one? I like both guns. Uh, quite frankly, my favorite gun is still my AK Merlin. Uh, it's my favorite shooter. But uh, this is a gun that I'm going to shoot. And I, I, I enjoy shooting it. It shoots, it shoots to my shooting style. So um, I think it's great. I can't compare it against uh, like the Meteor because I've, I've shot a Meteor gun. Um, I do, didn't really like kind of some of their milling sharp edges and stuff like that. Um, that Numeric gun, I haven't shot one of those. Um, but I have one of his frames, and there's uh, some, a lot of nice things about that. Um, but this gun, out of the box, straight up, is a shooter. And outside of having to detune it a little bit, uh, which is fine, I, you know, apparently someone complained that the gun didn't shoot hot enough when they, when they got it. So I think they purposely shoot them a little, a little soft. 
So anyway, that's what I have here. Let's get into some shooting stuff and we'll go from there. So, my final thoughts on this is uh, for a $1,700 marker, the minor things I don't like, and Shock Tech, fix your ASA. Do stuff to change it. Fix it. I hate that thing. That should be your next project, all right? So, that's why it doesn't make a five for five out of me. Uh, five trumps. It doesn't get five trumps because 4.9 trumps. It's almost there. You need to fix that ASA. It's not broken. It works fine. It's just, it's 1980s, man. And, uh, and I think it looks horrible, but the marker is an amazing marker. It is a, I, I get why the shock tech guys are the shock tech guys. I get why they just say this is the best stuff. It, I, it, do I say it's the best stuff? No, I, I get why they, they like it so much because it is a, it's a machine. It is fun to shoot. And, uh, and I'm glad that I finally purchased one because it doesn't have shock tech milled down the side. This desert fox thing looks amazing. So, you know, comparing to other, other guns out there, every gun shoots a little different. Find the gun you like, the gun you can afford, and, and be happy. So my next project, I want to do a free flow. I don't want the vendor to send me one. Um, what I want to do is I may do a, a, go, a GoFundMe for a free flow, and then when we get done with it, I'll option it off. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.